From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Charlie Kleps, and for Diane Parker. President Joe Biden is officially running for re-election in 2024 with Kamala Harris as his running mate. The announcement came early this morning in a video titled Freedom, which was released exactly four years after his announcement for the 2020 presidential race. In the video, the president invokes images from January 6th and takes swipes at Republicans. And new today, Montana Senator Steve Daines is endorsing Donald Trump for president in 2024. It's considered a big deal nationally because Daines is the chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee. His job is to help Republicans win the Senate in 2024, and he has influence with powerful donors. He announced the endorsement yesterday on Donald Trump Jr.'s interview show, Triggered. Dane saying in part, quote, We transformed the courts. We had the country that was respected and strong. I'm proud to endorse Donald J. Trump for President of the United States. Another one of Montana's neighboring states is limiting abortion access. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum signed a law banning abortion after six weeks. The bill goes into effect immediately, though a previous ban is currently being challenged before the state Supreme Court. And we're learning that snow might be off the Beartooth Highway earlier than usual. Crews are ahead of schedule clearing the scenic road ahead of its customary Memorial Day weekend opening. Crews say there isn't much snowpack after a dry start to 2023. This is what it looked like on May 5th of last year. This year, crews will likely be at that spot within a day or two. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hopefully treating you good so far. Our local forecast coming up here in just a second. But first, I always like to start things off with what's going on across the 48th U.S. forecast today. Central to Southern Plains, heavy rain, isolated flash flooding and severe weather. You can see in the shaded area there of yellow, maybe even it's not a it's not a a big chance, but it's not a zero chance of tornado activity. But that possibility is there. Something to keep an eye on. Colorado Rockies, portions of the Front Range, heavy wet snow expected later today, and the Southern Rockies to the Southern High Plains, elevated to critical fire weather conditions, persist again today. Here locally, we've got mild conditions for a good portion of the state down in northern parts of Wyoming. We've got that area of low pressure dropping to the south, trying to take the moisture with it. High pressure takes over to keep us dry at least one more day, and then rain on Thursday. We'll tell you why. Coming up. Now to arrests at the Montana State Capitol. Demonstrators removed from the gallery by police while chanting, let her speak, as House leaders refuse to recognize Missoula Representative Zoe Zephyr for a third straight day. MTN's Jonathan Amberian reports. There was a significant disruption on the Montana House floor on Monday, as protesters in the gallery began shouting and chanting, let her speak, as House Speaker Matt Regeer again declined to recognize Missoula Representative Zoe Zephyr on the floor. The issue that drove Monday's protest goes back to last week when Zephyr, a transgender woman, spoke on the floor about a bill to ban gender-affirming medical procedures for transgender youth. She said lawmakers who voted for the bill should be ashamed and would have blood on their hands. After that, Speaker Regeer said he had concerns that Zephyr wouldn't maintain decorum if he called on her, and he was using his authority as Speaker not to recognize her to speak on the floor. Zephyr's supporters say Regeer's decision is depriving her constituents of their voice in the House. On Monday morning, they delivered a petition with more than 3,000 names urging him to change his decision. At noon, they held a rally on the Capitol's front steps, again saying, let her speak, and raising a banner reading, democracy dies here. So I'd say the best and easiest next step is for Speaker Regeer to wrap this to a close and begin to allow Representative Zephyr to do her job on the floor once again. Beyond that, I think only, t only time will tell. Zephyr said she was sent to Helena to speak for her constituents and her community, and she planned to keep doing it. At 1 p.m., the House began its daily floor session. More than 100 people filled the gallery. We have rules for our members as well as our guests. Guests, please no cheering, booing, signs, noises of any kind. The gallery is for observation only. Our committee meetings are for public interaction. We welcome you to the Montana House. Zephyr again attempted to speak in debate over a bill when Regeer again decided not to recognize her and the House voted not to overturn his decision. That's when the protesters began shouting. Let her speak! Let her speak! Let her speak! And what you're watching here 
but you're watching people who do not want to see democracy in action. They want to strip us of our rights, and it's not enough for them to get the harmful bills through. <laughs> when someone stands up and calls out their bills for the harm they cause, for the deaths they cause, they want silence, and we will not be complicit in our eradication. Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton said seven people were arrested for criminal trespass and that he expected all of them would be booked and released without bond. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The new Billings Airport Terminal is feeling like a first-class upgrade. New restaurants, Logan's, Cinnabon, and Stacked are now open. Travelers tell us it gives the airport a bigger city feel. Construction isn't quite done yet, though. Crews are working on Concourse B, which will be ready at the start of 2024. Airport leaders say so far the reaction to the $60 million updates have been nothing but positive. We wanted to have a 21st century terminal that people can be proud of compared to other airports, and I think we were successful in doing that. People were telling us that this was you know, some of the best stuff they've had in regional airports, and so it was, it was exciting to hear. Airport leaders hope some of the changes will entice airlines to add more flights to more cities out of Billings. An effort by the state of Montana to dismiss a case regarding Indian education in Montana has been denied. A district judge's opinion issued last week in Cascade County District Court means a lawsuit on behalf of Montana students and tribes will proceed. MTN's Tim McGonigal reports. An effort by the state of Montana to dismiss a case regarding Indian education in Montana has been denied. A district judge's opinion issued last week in Cascade County District Court means a lawsuit on behalf of Montana students and tribes will proceed. I think it's the right thing. I think she made a very just and uh, excellent call. Shawna Yellow Kidney of Missoula, a member of the Blackfeet Nation and a parent of three children in the Missoula School District, is a plaintiff in the case and part of a group proposing a class action lawsuit against the Office of Public Instruction and State Board of Education. The case was filed in July 2021 against the state for violating a constitutional mandate to teach Indian education for all. I think everybody knows it's about time for our, our, our cultures to come to understanding and respect with one another. And through learning about each other's cultures is the only way to do that, in my opinion. According to the ACLU of Montana, which along with the Native American Rights Fund filed the suit, it seeks accountability, saying the state gives millions of tax dollars to public schools for Indian education without requiring schools to report how they invested the money, developed curriculum with tribes, or taught the subject. In her opinion, District Judge Amy Eady said the defendant's argument that despite the plain statutory language, they specifically have no responsibility or authority to enforce the IEFA is completely unfounded. The duties prescribed by the IEFA apply to every educational agency and all education personnel, and the defendants present no cogent argument they should not be included in these terms. House Bill 338, which would revise laws related to Indian education for all, is currently making its way through the legislature. Yellow Kidney says the bill's original form was good, but Senate amendments have made it ambiguous. As of right now, the understanding is one of the words was changed to advised rather than required. Mm -hmm. And that simple word change leaves the ambiguity to not be able to follow up once again. So OPI is represented by the Montana Department of Justice, which doesn't comment on pending litigation and didn't respond to our request for comment. However, OPI Communications Director Brian O'Leary did tell MTN Indian education for all is an important and necessary part of public education in Montana. Local school districts have a responsibility to ensure that indigenous culture and history are taught to our students. Yellow Kidney also serves on the Parent Advisory Committee for Indian Education for Missoula County Public Schools, which she says is among the many across Montana doing a good job administering the program. No matter where you are, even if you're in a district that doesn't have a lot of Indian students, the cross-cultural and understanding of learning how to communicate with one another better, understanding one another better, the social cues. I mean, there's just, in addition to all the indigenous practices, it really goes hand in hand. In Great Falls, Tim McGonigal, MTN News.